What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Ignite. This is gonna be awesome. We've got a superstar in the house. This is gonna be fun. We're not, we don't just have a lot of DSO experience, but we've done other things like lower extremities. We have a true healthcare marketer in the house today. I'm very excited to introduce you to Lacey Randall, straight out of Smashville. What's up, Lacey? Hi there, how are you, Alex? I'm good and caffeinated. I finally slept well for the first time in six nights last night. So that at That's my age good morning. changes the entire <laughs> day. In fact, my wife, when she wakes up every day, she's like, how'd you sleep? Yes, it That's, does set the know, tone. I get that. Yeah. It goes up and down. Lacey, tell them where you work and then we'll frame up that organization, the size and all that kind of stuff so our listeners understand. Okay, I work for Specialty Dental Brands. Uh, we're a house of various dental specialties, as the name implies. I'm the marketing director for pediatric dentistry and multi-specialty offices. So that's anything that has orthodontics as well as pediatric dentistry or even OMS. Okay, got it. And how many locations is that? We have over specialty. 200 as, as a company and I personally have have about 85 offices that encompass about 47 brands. Well, that's a lot, 47 brands. How do you keep up with all of that? Like uh, incredible, 47 brand domains, all like, Absolutely. where do you even start when you have that much? We, we have an in-house agency. We all work together very well. So I immerse myself in it. I'm friends with all the office managers. I love all the doctors that I work with. It's really getting to know them on a personal level and kind of knowing their personalities that helps put all of it together so you can remember a lot better. I love it, Lacey. And that's something too many marketers are skimming over these days. They don't realize the internal, used to call it politicking, but network building, I guess, is a, the better word to use. Yeah, relationship building. It has to happen internally. So the office managers follow along with the initiatives that we need so that we're driving campaigns to where everybody needs patients. I love that. And you build bridges with the providers. Absolutely. And, and I, I like to also help educate them. You know, these are brilliant exactly. individuals. Um, They've not only gone to dental school, but they've gone to additional training to be a pediatric dentist. But one thing they may not have a solid background is, is marketing. So I feel like as a marketing professional, if I can help educate them on what works, what doesn't, and why it doesn't work or why it does work, then we work together a lot better. And SEB has been great at facilitating that too. Yeah, very good. Yeah, they're great doctors. Business is not, you know, and that's part of why they sell to a DSO or they're brought into a DSO is because they want support with the admin stuff so that they can practice medicine and clean some teeth and fix some kiddos. <laughs> um, and that's awesome that you get to be on the peat side. How rewarding. Um, very oh, cool. It's a, lot, it's a lot of fun. You can be a lot more creative than, say, a general practitioner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can use colors on your yes, websites. Absolutely. <laughs> that's fun. Okay, very cool. And speaking of marketing, what's the biggest thing we've done over the last year? Where's your focus been with specialty dental? As always, digital marketing plays a big part, especially to our demographic, because we're dealing with a lot of younger adults that have children, right? Um, or caretakers of, of any age, but we do focus on that kind of 50 and under demographic. So our keyword optimization for all of our digital ads and all of SEO has been super important, especially after you go through an acquisition and maybe you don't know the practice that well, or or don't know the area, it's important to do all the research you can to figure out where they're pulling patients from. So optimizing those keywords, optimizing the area that you're focusing on has been a huge part of what we've done this past year, as well as implementing reputation management across all of our offices. I love that. There was no review system, review solicitation system in patchy. place when you it was patchy. Okay, not it wasn't automatically going out. What did you encounter and what did we do about it? Well, one of the pushbacks I always get, no matter where I'm working, is doctors are afraid of reviews. I will say at SCB we have mostly great reviews. And it is very seldom that a review reflects the service of the provider, right? Or the experience. It's always office. about billing, always yeah. about insurance, parking, yeah. miscommunication, or they're not even a patient and they left the review on the wrong site. I feel like <laughs> everyone in marketing has had a few of those. So th that's very interesting to me because providers should be excited because, because we all know the more reviews you get, the more the bad ones are kind of pushed down and not seen as often. So I want to crank those out. And we have a goal of about five to 10 per office per week. So you did set a goal. There's a KPI and then you guys have some kind of dashboard you're monitoring. What tech are you using? What are you using? Well, it's not consistent across the board, but I'd say 85% are using Swell. All right, Swell. Swill or Swell? Swell. Swell. All right, Swell. And that must be, is that a dental specific review solicitation they, platform? They do have a lot of dental offices on there. Okay. It's not dental specific. All right, very good. 
And so guys, you heard it. Swell, great. And then, but don't do any initiative without a KPI. That's what Lacey's done really well. And she probably went around, I'm assuming you went around and trained them. Hey, this is going to be the big initiative for the year. We've yes. got to get the reviews up. Yep. Yeah. And you had to train Absolutely. the provider, the dentist and say, guys, don't be afraid of this. What you should be afraid of is not asking because those are just the negative Nancy's that are going to be coming around. Absolutely. And to get them off of those platforms that people complain on a lot and get them over to Google, because we all know Google runs the world in that department. And we want to make yes. sure their Google business is totally up to date. And that's the first thing they see. That's what we want people to go to. Good. Okay. So you did focus on Google. I love it. And are you also, did you also build an individual Google, my business, Google business profile pages for the dentist too? And are you sending reviews there or just locate, just location? Got just it. locations. And yep. the reason we do that is because it runs the gamut. Some of our offices have five or six providers. Some have one and that way we can keep an eye on it. It's a lot easier. Sometimes um, people get confused with names. I have a funny story about that. One of my best friends went to a general dentist, spent $20,000 she had a lot of excessive dental work, a lot of issues from her childhood. She texted me to ask me what his first name was. Mm. She did not remember. She said, I've given this man all this money, but I want to talk to him like a colleague, like a friend. And I always say doctor, whatever his last name is. And she said, do you know his first name? So that's the reason why we go by location, because oftentimes you get confused, especially if it's a simple last name. Or you don't really remember. You see someone yeah. twice a year. Maybe you don't remember, but you know where it's located. Yeah, yeah. I see that a lot in dental. There won't be as much of an emphasis on the individual provider listings, right. reputation. It's more so it's, hey, location and brand based. So, yeah. Also, you've got the students coming out of school that are going to be piped in and you don't want them to attach them. All right. I like it. So you're talking about, all right. So you have KPIs. How else, how are you tracking things, Lacey? What kind of, are you using dashboard systems, pulling things out of Denicon, Dendron? Like what are, how do you track success across 40 something brands? Insane. We use channel mix and that was pretty okay. recently implemented. And the reason I like that it's real time. We can see to the dollar what we're spending on every platform. We can see how many leads are coming from every campaign. Some of our offices have multiple ca campaigns, especially when you get into this multiple specialty. We want to see how ortho is performing compared to peds because peds should be funneling into that ortho. And it's super interesting when you do a deep dive, what keywords are working, which ones are not. And Channel Mix offers all of that. That way we don't have to go into multiple platforms to get that information. I love that. And your in-house agency built that. Lacey, tell me about the structure of your in-house team. So what support people do you have? Where are they part-time, full-time? Everybody, that's the one question I always get. How do I build my team? You know, that is hard. And it's a decision you have to make pretty much for the beginning. Are you going to outsource everything and have like a leader that works with multiple vendors? Are you going to outsource some of it? We bring everything in-house that gives us more omni-control. That way, if there's an issue, we don't have to wait for a vendor to get back to us. And especially like as a vendor yourself, you guys do a phenomenal job. I've seen some of your work, but we know that is not the case. As we go through an acquisition period, we try to onboard all of those former websites and dealing with some of these vendors. It is a nightmare that I don't wish upon my worst enemy. Yep. Um, so when we bring it in-house, we have that control. We know what's going on. I can walk over to someone's desk and say, hey, why isn't this getting done as opposed to waiting for a response? Yeah, one third to choke. These slow agencies giving us a bad name, Lacey. I like it. And so tactically, so do you have people in Nashville that are in charge of content, media, or they near short? Like what does? Yes, yes. Does Everyone is like? full time, but we all wear multiple hats. So cool. we have everything from content writers to more website project managers. We have a UX designer. We have a digital leader, a paid ads leader. So we're very, we're very fortunate. Whoa. Absolutely. We're very fortunate. And then I kind of handle everything for all the peds and multi-specialty practices to make sure everything gets done. Everything is consistent on brand. There's no hiccups, even though there's always a hiccup. Uh, we, we battle those as they come. I love that. And for all of that to be in-house, there's got to be one super savvy leadership team. I feel like it's got to yes. be a bunch of people that understand marketing to in-house it and run an agency like that. Very smart. It's hard enough running an agency when it's all I do. I couldn't exactly. imagine for you guys that are trying to practice medicine too. Oh my Absolutely. gosh. Absolutely. We Hard. have we have a great operations team and we work very close with our operations team and we have great leaders there as well as we have a VP of all marketing that kind of keeps everyone together and yeah. make sure that any of the MarTech is consistent. Every All the platforms are working, that we're hitting numbers and then we're kind of responsible for our own uh, business unit. Cool. I love it. Channel mix. Do you guys have online scheduling? Yes. Across what do you use? 
lot of our offices. Who, what's your what's your tech? What's your platform? It it depends. Um, we're right. not all on the same PMS right now, just because multi specialty yeah. kind of throws that for a loop. So we, we use Curve, we use Next Health, whatever is included in the PMS. Um, yeah. We're working on that. Denicon has its own online scheduling link, so we're adding that right now. And are you guys tracking media placed into booking or are you mostly cost per lead, phone, email, online scheduling? How far does channel mix take? What is your- We're doing both. We're doing I, both. Wow. Sophisticated, Lacey. I and, love that. <laughs> we're trying our best. We, um, I love form fields, right? I want all the information ahead of time so that our office managers can call and, and see what's going on. But I also yeah. love online scheduling. I love taking people directly there and letting them handle themselves, especially the demographic I work with. I don't want to call someone and make an appointment. No. I want to line and have it out of my hair. Yeah. We found the no-show rate sometimes with the phone is worse, or sorry, with online scheduling is worse because mm -hmm. they felt nothing towards the practice. They didn't actually right. talk to a human. And so some of our clients have started calling after the online scheduling. That's, have you seen the no-show rates are worse? Yeah. So you guys are doing that. Cool. Call tracking. What do you guys use? Call tracking. We're using different platforms there too. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. It. Whenever you have so, so many hard. locations yeah. and so many different specialties, Ooh. you've got, and I have one brand that has over 14 locations. I say over because when we don't really market. Um, yeah. So that's when it gets really fun. Yeah. And Lacey, I'm, I'm now in talking to you, I'm realizing how tough of a job you have because you got, you do all of this M and A and then they have this thing and that thing and this thing. And you're like, Oh my God, we're going to spend the next, next six months just getting you onto the same tech that we have on the other people's. I hope you, you have a lot of help. Correct there. I hope you got a lot of help there, Lacey. Oh my God. So that's killer. Every marketer wakes up and absolutely loves something. Where does your focus go? What do you, what part of marketing do you love the most? Well, first of all, I like to see results, if I'm going to be honest. Hell yeah. I love to see those positive results. But otherwise, I love the educational aspect. And I say that because I think as a healthcare marketer, that's always something we have to overcome. I personally read almost every lead that comes through. I want to see what the problem is. I want to see what we should be marketing to. What what can we solve for our patients? And uh, just for example, if we can use educational tactics, people don't have to call the office and ask all these questions. They already have the information in front of them. Um, you know, a lot of calls are about insurance or hours. You've got to answer those su answer those super simple questions, but also. People don't know when children should be coming to see a dentist, right? Do I take my baby? Do they need to have all of their teeth in? There's so many questions yeah. That, yeah. that we get like that. So anytime we can educate, but also advertise at the same time, it makes a huge difference. So that's something that I like to focus on is making sure that we kind of answer questions in a cool way or in a design-based aesthetic so that people aren't wondering why yeah. why does this person have braces when they're 14 and this person has them when they're seven do mm -hmm. people lose all their baby teeth before they get braces there's so many random questions that that we feel that we try to take care of that on websites and through ads when possible i love that so you are advertising upper funnel educational stuff we have those questions too because we have a we have 14 4 and 3 year old and by the time we got to the 4 and 3 year old we forgot what we learned with the 14. <laughs> So, and we we took the little guys uh, to the dentist, and she was like, "They're biting their teeth. They're gonna. They both have all these cavities. They're gonna need this and that." And it was like, "What the hell?" And so to have those resources that you guys all have on your website, that would have been hugely helpful. But we walked out in there, and she just said, "Go look it up." And we're like, "I don't know if this is the dentist for us." So that's very cool that you spend a lot. So you love educating. You love when the education turns into results, helps the parent feel good. I know it helps take a lot load off our mind. And you mentioned aesthetically pleasing. So I'm going <laughs> to assume you're not using just chat, BT, chat GBT. Give me an article on when someone should have braces, spit it out, put it on 46 blogs. No, no, not at all. You know, ChatGPT has done wonders for a lot of different content creators, and I do believe in using it, but I also believe you have to personalize it a little bit more. Some of it, some of it I can tell right away on a blog or even an ad. I'm like, this doesn't even read well. Yeah. It doesn't read like something or how you would say something. So Correct. although we do use that to a point, we do not rely on it at any point for any of our offices, just because we try to offer a more customized experience than just you know, dialing up a dentist down the road and throwing your kid in front of them. So we yeah. want to make sure that all the nooks and crannies are covered. 
I love it. So authenticity at the heart of it. Do you have, would you have a dentist or a mid-level, a hygienist, anybody review and like put some specific quirks in there or what are we doing? Yeah. Absolutely. We have, you know, I reach out. There's a core group that I'll reach out to that I know are A, responsive, B, want to be more involved and C, you know, have been doing it for a long time. Does this even make sense? Or if they've been doing it for a long time, are they still using the same ways or has something changed that I need to know about that, you know, I don't have a dental background. I don't have a health background. I I am a marketing major. So it's important to have someone that you can bounce these questions off and make sure that you're relaying the right information, but making sure that it it looks like their office or it looks like their hygienist. And so that's very important to us. I love it. So you need to find your internal cheerleaders, your your group that cares and wants to improve the type of education you're delivering. And then you go to them and you say, hey, Les, I'm back, Jim. Can you look at this article? The cool thing is you can, I guess, somewhat duplicate that article across the 40 <laughs> sites and just add yes. the twist of the location and stuff onto there. But yeah, we definitely okay. want to scale. But at yeah, the same yeah. time, we have to know that it's not one size fits all. That's a dream. No, so <laughs> the, are you guys mostly in the Southeast? So are you mostly in the Southeast? No, we are across the country. Woo! Okay. in Montana and South Dakota. I think Montana is number two on my bucket list. Number one, Hawaii. Number two, Montana. Well, we're hiring, wait. so I can send you that recruiting ad right now. If I, got, like. I got, I got, I got teeth, Lacey. They won't take me. So <laughs> what do you see not working? Let's talk about what you've seen not work. I think that's important for marketers in your field to also know. what. This is going to get me a lot of flack, but I don't see QR codes being the be all end all. Okay. There's nothing more frustrating than seeing a QR code on a billboard. On a website, I've seen a QR code on a website. I just had to slam my laptop shut it. On a mailer, first of all, I'm not a fan yeah. of mailers for a myriad of reasons, but okay. a QR code on a mailer. Why are we spending all this money when we can talk about your message right now? Why are you taking me somewhere else? And I love the trackability of them and they do serve a purpose. But when you're not going to a proper landing page or a promotion, when it's just leading to your website, why did you take up valuable real estate on anything with an ugly QR code? So Unbelievable. That's, that's always my frustration when someone suggest, suggests we should put a QR code on it um yeah. no where where are we yeah. taking them are they are we going to disney world because that's the only thing that's going to make me scan that qr code on your website <laughs> that's right my wife would scan qr codes all day if that were the case we just went to disneyland <laughs> like two weeks ago and i'm still tired um that qr code i remember the um, super bowl commercial where and i don't remember who the, the brand was at right. this point but the qr code bounced that was clever and that yes. was good because it gets you got it got you guessing. You're like, all right, I want to know what this is about. But for the most part, it's like, dude, you're now just going to make me work more. I don't understand. Absolutely, uh, that, I have- that is it. And I I think the pandemic, you know, it helped with with making people use them and know how to. But I do remember around 2010, 2011. I uh, created this really simple app because we needed it with, in South Florida for a boat show, and. I should not have created it. It was horrible. However, I tried and I had a QR code that led to this horrible app (laughs) and no one knew what it was. That was an adoption strategy before it was well used. Uh It did not work. It didn't work. (laughs) It looked like I was some big techie. Yeah. They're like, Lacey. And they're like, what is all of these dots on this thing? It's a QR code. What's a QR code? (laughs) Sometimes like the most innovative stuff. Yeah. (laughs) I guess not. Yeah. I got it. The best. The best platform still has to be used at the right time and executed correctly, I suppose. What are you going to be focused on? You got a ton going on. Is it going to be the M&A, like media marketing playbooks over the next year? What's it? Where's where's your focus going to be for the rest of 24? Yes. And and something I like to focus on is personalization and authenticity, right? Long gone are the days with beautiful actors, actresses, and videos that we're throwing on a website, throwing on Facebook. Now we want to see the ugly, as I say. We want to see the reality. We want to see someone like us you know, getting in there, going to a doctor's office. So we're doing a lot more, I don't want to call it necessarily bespoke work, but it is more personalized to not only our offices, but to the authentic experience, because people want to know what they're getting into at that office. They don't want a stock photo of the same girl that we've seen in every healthcare ad for the past 10 years. I mean, I start naming them at this point. I hope she made a ton off of her royalties. There's Brittany. (laughs) Exactly. If we see this, this same girl on every website, every ad. So just- over my website. So are you, are you doing the, 
in office, like virtual tours? Are you having photo shoots done at the acquired practices kind We're of stuff? We're doing all of that. We're having yeah. patients, real patients, telling them to use their iPhone and video them at the dentist. You know, some of our cheerleaders at the offices that are great patients. We're doing that. We're throwing some of our providers in there and filming them, but not doing it perfectly, right? Yeah, no, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Perfection is long gone. We want TikTok. We want creators. We want those people in front of the camera that's talking about the authenticity and yeah. not just the perfection. Are you doing the ticky tockies? I am not. You do not want me on TikTok. I would probably be banned right away because I would say something, <laughs> something yeah. crazy. However, mm -hmm. we like to concentrate on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, right Facebook and Instagram, all right. We, we do have providers that are great with TikTok, but as you know, I don't have to tell this audience this, if you're not doing it consistently, please don't do it at all, please. And <laughs> most of us cannot do it consistently. Let's be right. honest, we can hardly keep up with 46 brands on Meta and running ads and SEO and reputation and listings. Right. Like I haven't seen a group that does those things well, so there's no point of trying to get too creative and fancy. And how else do you guys personalize? So we have some of that. We're asking the providers to get on or patients, testimonials in office. Is there anything else you guys do? Well, we're working on a dynamic website experience. Okay. So, Tell me more. So as we're kind of, we brought all of them onto our servers right now. And we deal with a lot of old, very poorly put together websites at times. And so they're not running where they should be, right? So we want to make those more dynamic. We want to bring them into the future. You know, I know you're very well aware that sometimes people throw a video on a website and expect this to just blow everyone's mind. And those days are kind of fading. Those videos that don't uh, they don't rank well or they're just so slow that's really hindering the patient experience we want it we want to make it more personalized so I like to compare it to like Instagram to whenever you're seeing those things recommended for you we're hoping to get to a place where what you're looking for is the first thing that pops up your experience is going to be different from your neighbor's experience so I think personalization on actual websites is in the future, maybe not tomorrow, but in the future, as we change some of those websites and bring them more up to date. Yeah, I love it. We'll definitely get there. The geo personalization is where it started. Hey, I see you're from here. Are you looking for this kind of thing? And I've seen some groups are st now starting to train AI chatbots so that you can go on there as a mom and be like, hey, what location services does my kidney braces yet? And it's going to start answering that stuff. That kind of, I think that's going to help everybody's patient experience quite a bit. The personalization, we're going to get there. It's going to be a weird balance. Like because we have less signals because of HIPAA compliance that we all have right. to follow. Yeah, we want more personalized patient experiences. It's like, come on, government, let us do a little bit more. Let this is less, this fun, is less fun. Let it, <laughs> this is less fun than it was. Lacey, this has been a blast. Thank you for joining us on Ignite. We learned a ton. You have a ton on your plate. We'll be watching your trajectory and specialty dental brands very closely. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. I appreciate your time, Alex.